Hey guys, so my husband is out of town and I decided to vlog today. I think it's a perfect day because you can keep me company. I do get pretty lonely when he is away and I know a lot of you have been asking me questions about my wedding, what have I been up to lately. So we get a chance to catch up. I know we haven't really talked, you know, like face to face, well, I mean face to screen in a very long time. So today we get a chance to catch up and have a fun day together. Right now, I am planning to go to West Elm, which is located in downtown Toronto. Um, update number one, we are actually moving out of this place, so that's why I'm going to a furniture store. West Elm is one of my favorite furniture stores. However, as much as I love their stuff, I only shop there when they're having a sale, so they're having one this week, and I'm going. I'm also going to have lunch at one of my favorite vegan restaurants which is located pretty much on the same street as West Elm, I think. Um, it's called Life Organic, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, free of uh, refined sugars, it's so delicious. They have raw vegan dishes, they have cooked vegan dishes. I haven't been there in so long and I'm just super excited and you guys get to come along, so let's go. I'm wearing one of my favorite flowy summer dresses. It has been ridiculously hot in Toronto the past couple of days. I think we've gone up to 40 degrees this weekend, which is really unusual, especially for September. But you know what? I do not mind. I do not mind at all. I'm here. So hungry. Oh my god. So, by the way, it's called Live Organic, not Life Organic. Yeah, I get it wrong every single time. I was too shy to vlog inside of the cafe. It's actually a cafe. They have a couple locations. One is more like a restaurant and that's where I usually go to and this is more like a cafe. It's a takeout place. I got the Italian bowl and you can get it with rice or quinoa or steamed greens. So I got the steamed greens because I wanted to get more greens today. And uh, it comes with, I guess, roasted portobello mushrooms, roasted red peppers, pesto, tomato sauce, chickpeas. And just the combination was so so amazing. I've never tried that bowl before, so I think I need to recreate it when I get home ASAP because it was really, really good. Oh, West Elm. I'm thinking of getting two of these chairs to go with our dining table because we need two more chairs. I might get this scroll. It's very cute and the best part is it is vegan. I was checking it. Yeah, 100% acrylic. It's very soft. I think it's almost 6 30 so I ended up not getting any furniture because to be honest I only needed two more dining chairs right now we only have four and whenever we have guests over whether it's family or friends we don't really have that much sitting place so some people have to stand when they're eating some people have to sit on the couch and I don't really like that but there were quite a few options there were like three or four choices of chairs that we could potentially get and I just couldn't decide without my husband so we'll probably have to go back together next time that was Thomas having a sales but I'd get a couple of small home items which I'm gonna show you right now there they are these are the glasses that I showed you at the store I really like this design I really dig it it does remind me of something my grandparents had I think it's very classic i would probably assume that you drink alcohol out of it but my husband and i don't really drink alcohol so i think it would still work really well for juice or you can even make some vegan hot chocolate and i think it would look really nice in photos too so yay for the glasses and then i got the blanket that i showed you at the store 
it has this really nice um i don't know stripe design i guess but i really like these tassels it's super super soft and like i told you at the store it is 100 percent acrylic so it is vegan which i'm very happy about it will probably go on our couch let's go see if it matches the couch right now we're mostly using this throw but i wanted to change it up a little bit what do you guys think i think it looks good and then i got some flatware i think west m is famous for this one this is their gold five piece flatware set i only got one because they, it was very expensive but i really wanted just gold flatware i think it would look amazing in photos so that's why i only got one and you know if i really like the functionality of it maybe we'll get a second set so my husband and i can use them for our daily needs too So this is what the flatware looks like. I'm probably not going to unpackage it right now because we are moving. So it makes sense to keep it in its original package. So it's easier for us to move from one place to another. And I'm going to wrap my glasses again. I do have more stuff to show you if you guys are interested. We went to Muji yesterday, which is this really cool Japanese store that recently opened uh, in Toronto. And I got a bunch of cute stuff. Do you guys want to see? I usually don't do a lot of shopping and when I go shopping I buy a lot of things so this is quite <laughs> unusual for me and also very exciting so if you're in the mood to see cute things keep on watching so These are all of the things that I got from Muji and yes I did get a white loofah Don't ask me why I just felt like it But anyways be prepared to hear the word cute every 10 seconds or so so yeah, since you can see this already. So I got a couple new coasters. I just love this design. I love the natural feel of it. And uh, I don't know, it just seems so beautiful to me. A couple months ago, I started bullet journaling. So I got a couple goodies for my bullet journal. <laughs> um, this is uh, just a regular black gel pen, but it's very thin. So it will work really good for writing in my bullet journal. This is a wooden pencil, <laughs> which I thought was very cute, very small and skinny, and I really liked it. And this is a little ruler, which I can keep in the back of my bullet journal so I can take it with me. And here I have just a very basic, but very beautiful to me, bowl. It has this ripped design inside and i thought it was just the perfect bowl for again your dinner bowls your breakfast bowls for salad as well so i decided to get one and these are the items i'm most excited about these are some cute teacups look how cute it is the best part it is so light you guys it is so light it is glass so it's safe to use for tea but it's just so adorable and it's so nice to hold and i got two saucers to go with them all right so i changed i cleaned up a little bit and now it's time to make food because i'm starving i'm going to make mexican flavored quinoa and i'm using this black quinoa for the recipe looks really cool doesn't it black quinoa is cooked a little bit different than the regular yellow or gold quinoa so the package said to soak it for 10 minutes first so this is what i'm doing and while i'm waiting for quinoa don't mind my dirty workout clothes i'm going to soak some almonds for the next few days soaking almonds is actually considered beneficial because after they've been soaked it's easier for you to digest them and it's also easier for you to absorb or oh, you can't see me it's easier for you to absorb all the benefits that almonds have so that's why i'm doing it to be honest i don't do it very often i just forget so i just usually eat almonds as they are not soaked but when i remember i think it's a good practice so i try and do it So 
So it's suggested to soak about one cup of almonds in two cups of water and you just leave it overnight on your counter and then you rinse it, add the water again and then you store it in your fridge for a few days. So it's been 10 minutes, I rinsed quinoa and this is one cup of quinoa and I transfer it to a pot. Now I'm going to add one and a quarter cup of water. We gotta get a little bit of salt and then we're just gonna bring it all to a boil. It's set to bring quinoa to a boil and boil it for approximately 30 seconds. So it's been about 30 seconds now. Then I should lower the heat and let it simmer without covering it, which I'm really surprised about. I usually always, always cover my quinoa when I cook it. So I don't know how this is going to turn out, but let's hope for the best. After simmering it for 14 minutes, I turned off the heat, then I fluffed it with a fork and uh, I covered it now for about five minutes. So hopefully it turns out well. Moment of truth. The quinoa is supposed to be ready. So let's try it. Oops. Hot. Mm. It's very crunchy, but good. I've made this recipe before in one of my previous what I eat in a day videos. I think this was actually my very first one. So I'm not going to go over the ingredients one more time. I did use buckwheat instead of quinoa in that recipe, but the rest of the process and ingredients are the same. So if you want to know how to make it, this is the name of the video. And guys, it has two freaking million views. How crazy. I think this is my most viewed video on YouTube. And I do want to have a salad with it, but I'm feeling kind of lazy and I do not feel like doing more dicing. So I don't know what kind of salad I can put together right now. We'll see. So let's see what I have. Well, I do have these mixed greens, so I might use them. And I have some leftover tahini dressing. So this is something already. And let's see, let's see. Okay, I can dice the cucumber, but nothing else. So dinner is ready. My Mexican quinoa and my I do not want to dice salad with some mixed green cucumbers and tahini dressing. So now I'm just going to eat my dinner all by myself. Well, with you guys. And I'm going to watch an episode of This Is Us. Got some leftovers. Woohoo! By the way, my containers are still on sale until October 15th. And if you use the code back to school, you get 40% off. This is the biggest sale I've ever had. Please never, never feel pressured to get the containers. I know they're not for everybody, but I get tons of emails from people asking me, when are you having your next sale? So I'm just reminding for those people. Sorry about the lighting, it's already super dark outside and we don't really have a lot of lighting in this apartment. I'm actually using my laptop over here to give me some glow so you guys can see me a little bit. But yeah, I'm done with my dinner, it was delicious and done with the episode of This Is Us. So, oops, <laughs> uh, you and I can chat a little bit for all of you who are wondering about my wedding so my husband and i got married in june we did have a june wedding and uh, it was honestly the best day of my life as cliche as it sounds the days leading up to the wedding have been very stressful very very hard i probably cried every single day for like a month right before the wedding because I just couldn't deal with the stress anymore and you know, I got to a point where I honestly just wanted to get it over with I was not excited about the wedding at all like I was excited to marry my husband but I was not looking forward to the whole wedding day we got super lucky with the weather it was a beautiful day and somehow everything just worked out I honestly did not think that I'm going to feel this way about my wedding I expected to 
hate it i expected a lot of things to go wrong but it was a beautiful beautiful day but i'm so happy that it's done <laughs> in august i also went to europe with my sister we actually surprised uh, my sister for her 20th birthday and we surprised her with a trip to amsterdam and norway she has been a huge fan of norway and norwegian culture and language we went to amsterdam first for a couple of days and then we actually boarded a cruise ship and we went to norway i think most of our stops were uh, fjords in norway and it was so beautiful it honestly exceeded my expectations and uh, i'm so happy we were able to visit this country uh, it was my first time and my sister's first time on a cruise so that was an interesting experience I did find it a little bit difficult to eat healthy and to eat vegan while on the cruise ship My options were kind of limited when it came to food uh, but other than that, I really enjoyed the experience. Uh, it was a really like luxurious boat, which I didn't realize that it was. I just found like the cheapest cruise and somehow it turned out to be really luxurious. But yeah, the boat was great. We had a lot of fun. And then Amsterdam was amazing. I've been to Amsterdam one time before when I was in exchange, but that was in the winter and we were there for like a day and a half. And so this time we went in the summer and I got to see a whole different side of Amsterdam. My sister and I really like the laid-back atmosphere in Amsterdam and just the overall feel of the city. It's again, it's very picturesque because of all the canals and all the cool buildings. So that was a lot of fun and yeah, I did not have a problem eating vegan in Amsterdam. I had my green juices, I had my salads, I was good. I do have some not so happy updates. Unfortunately, in the past couple of months, I've been having some health issues. Uh, a couple of weeks after the wedding, my TMJ uh, problem came back and TMJ is basically a disorder of your jaw joints. There is a joint that connects your bottom and your top jaws. I've had that problem back in university and I actually had to get a surgery for it. The biggest symptom that I experienced was just unbearable, unbearable headaches that would just not go away and it's the type of headache that is unlike anything else unless you have tmj you wouldn't really understand what it feels like so yeah i had the surgery done when i was in university and the surgery did help and i thought great i never have to deal with this again but unfortunately the problem and uh, the headaches came back after the wedding i do think it's because of the stress that i experienced when getting ready for the wedding and this time it lasted for about two months i had non-stop headaches i had a lot of pressure in my jaw and just my joints felt like they were on fire it was really really bad so it didn't get fixed by itself and i didn't have to go to the doctor again which i'm super happy about and last week i went for a blood test for like an annual checkup i was mostly interested to see my levels for b12 my protein calcium iron so you know those things that people assume that if you follow a vegan diet you might become deficient in i'm happy to report that my levels of all of those things are really really good but uh we did discover that i have a thyroid disorder uh, I believe it's called hypothyroidism, which basically means that my thyroid gland doesn't produce all of the important hormones. It's underperforming, as I understood. And to be honest, I didn't know that much about it uh, when my doctor told me that I have it. So I didn't really have a reaction, but then I went home and I started Googling. Yeah, I don't know why we do this, but I feel like every time you're afraid you have some or you've been diagnosed with something you start googling and you just make it worse for yourself but yeah so i spent a couple hours googling and then i started freaking out because it is quite serious and it's not something that should be taken lightly i do think that i was diagnosed correctly because i looked at the symptoms that are associated with this problem and uh, i do experience a lot of them so for the past couple of months my energy levels have been just super super low i get tired very easily i also uh, don't really feel rested when i wake up um you know it's wake up in the morning, be tired, be tired during the day, go to sleep tired. So 
it's been not fun not fun at all i've also been feeling a little bit depressed even though to be honest i have no reasons to be depressed or to even feel sad about anything i gained quite a bit of weight right now i look like i have a food baby all the time i've been losing more hair than usual i've been um, very emotional and feeling irritated very very often littlest things would just piss me off you know i would like drop something and i can just feel my blood boiling and i kept telling my husband you know i think something's wrong with my hormones because i feel crazy when i get so emotional so irritated about the tiniest things but i can't help it and i feel bad for myself i feel bad for my husband because he has to deal with it obviously he doesn't want to and he gets annoyed i also did some reading about hypothyroidism and how it impacts your ability to conceive a baby and to be able to have a healthy pregnancy and i completely lost it there uh, we're not really trying to have a baby anytime soon but i want to start having kids sooner rather than later and it's actually a dream of mine to have a big family so when that dream is threatened i just lose my shit so when i read all of that and i started reading um, some personal comments from people who are having this disorder and how they're not able to get pregnant or how they're having, you know, multiple miscarriages. I just started crying and I was like, oh my god, why is this happening to me? I do think that the reason I'm having this issue again is because I was super stressed out this summer because of the wedding. I get stressed out super super easily again about the smallest things you know even when it comes to youtube right before i upload a video i feel like this ball of stress inside of me i feel like what if you guys are not gonna like it you know what if you're just gonna start unsubscribing or when i read the comments i also just you know feel so anxious and i don't really have a reason to feel this way because 99 percent of my comments are very lovely very positive but you know sometimes there will be one nasty comment and that's all i can focus on and i just keep stressing about it and uh, it's not good it's not good and i know i've always been this way and you know my family members they tell me you need to learn how to control your stress but it's not easy you know it's not like you're gonna wake up one day and you're like you know what yes i've been this way for the all of my life and today i'm gonna be completely different and i'm not gonna stress at all i don't think it's easy i think it'll take a lot of work uh, but i'm trying i think i'm already over the phase where i felt sorry for myself and when i was you know freaked out and scared about this new diagnosis right now i accepted it i accepted that this is what i have to deal with for the next I don't know how long and i did put together a healing plan of how i'm going to approach this i found a very very useful video on youtube with two doctors talking about natural ways to heal hypothyroidism so i'm going to implement a lot of those advices in my life right now i'm basically going on my cleanse which i do every year and which i did do before my wedding uh but you know another thing why i think this is all happening is because when i was getting ready for the wedding i wanted to be in my best shape so i was eating very well doing my cleanse i was exercising and after the wedding we had family visiting and there was just like all these little trips happening and i kind of just like took it easy when it came to food i ate a lot of vegan junk food i ate a lot of stuff that had gluten and you guys might know that i do have a gluten sensitivity i also didn't really exercise that much anymore so i see how this problem could have developed but yeah so right now my plan is to go back on my cleanse for probably a few months uh start well i already started today <laughs> start working out start meditating doing yoga and also implement some of the natural uh, remedies for hypothyroidism which i learned about if you guys want me to make a separate video i'm talking about how exactly i'm going to approach this health issue what i'm going to do what my plan is let me know i am still learning about hypothyroidism i don't know that much about it but i think it's important now that i have it 
that I do. The camera died and stopped recording and I had to charge the battery for a while and it's getting pretty late, you know, so I think I'm going to do some bedtime yoga and then go to sleep while I was waiting for the camera to charge. I made some turmeric tea, better lighting. You know what? It's funny because today I was walking home and uh, I felt at peace with the whole situation and the diagnosis, I think mainly because I do have this plan of what i want to do how i'm going to heal my body using natural remedies but also i feel very grateful that the rest of my test came back with good results and that you know at the end of the day i could have been diagnosed with something much worse so i think i'm gonna be fine i believe that if i follow my cleanse diet for a while follow these um natural remedies i'm gonna get well very soon um, i've actually used the cleanse to help overcome chronic fatigue chronic heartburn candida in the past and it worked wonders it also helped my dad heal a lot of his health issues so i'm very optimistic now that you know i cried for like a day <laughs> yoga i usually follow videos from yoga with adrian channel i love adrian so much she's so sweet she's so lovely and she's an amazing yoga teacher definitely check out her channel if you're interested in doing some yoga at home but yeah thank you so much for keeping me company today i had a really good day i love you guys i hope you're having a wonderful day i'm sending you many hugs many kisses and i will see you in my next video Bye!